as we get started on this road that we are on. A lot of people are not knowing what the Antichrist is going to look like. And yet here we are in these very end times. So how will they know what the Antichrist will look like and what will be his character? What will he be like? If you ask most Christians today to describe his characteristic behaviors, they will say he's young, attractive, probably loved by everyone, very charismatic, he'll be smart, he'll be someone probably from the Middle East, he won't be attracted to women, so he'll probably be a homosexual, and he'll be easy to identify because he will be clearly standing against God and his people. But when I ask somebody, if you, now that's a pretty good bit of description you've just given me, I'll say, but where can you find, where can I find, if I go in my Bible and look that up, where can I find it? And you know what? People look at me with a blank stare. And they'll say, what do you mean? I said, well, I'd like to read it myself firsthand, right out the Word of God, where you got that from. Can you tell me where that's at? And you know what? <laughs> they don't know, because they ain't been reading their Bibles. I said, where did you get it from then? Well, hey, man, look at all these movies out. Ain't you watched some of these movies? Yeah, there's, I know Hollywood's got a lot of movies out, but that's their version. Is that what the Bible really says? Well, sure, they wouldn't lie to us, would they? Why would they lie to us? What are they going to gain from it by lying to us? So sure, they're going to tell us the truth. And they use these movies like it's straight out the Bible. But if you go back and compare what they have to say to what the Bible really says, it's nothing like what the Bible says. These are fictional lives, sci-fi movies, and they are designed to tickle your ears. And the mastermind behind them is who? None other than the devil himself. Because he wants to lead people away from the true gospel. Oh yeah, nice movies. I like to watch them myself and see how a lot of that stuff is going on. But in, <coughs> excuse me, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the Bible says now in verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall he to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall turn them unto fables. That fits a description pretty good then, huh? They don't want to hear what the Bible says, but they'll listen to something they watch on TV as the gospel truth. Now who's caused this? Well, the devil wants to have his Antichrist come into power. So they're going to believe that he's going to be young, popular, smart, attractive. But is it what the Bible says? Or is this a deception designed to hide what the Bible really says? And as we look at these, and you compare this stuff to these movies you've been watching, the devil's proclaimed will in Isaiah, we read, Chapter 14 of the book of Isaiah, the devil declares what he wants to do. Now, is there anybody today that you have heard say some of the things like we're going to hear here? Verse 13 of Isaiah 14, For thou hast said in thine heart, not even so much as he opened his mouth to say it, but he says it in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. <coughs> I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
I will be like the Most High. So, this fellow wants to be God. He wants to be just like God. He wants to be God, matter of fact. Now, how does the Bible describe the Antichrist? As a force for good? But being this force for good, oh, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you. What, what does he do with God the Father and God the Son? Does he come in God's name or does he come in his own name? Because if he comes in his own name, <coughs> and not in the name of the Lord, then he's exalting himself, isn't he? And not God. He will love money and gold and false idols. He will honor the God of forces. He will be arrogant and magnify himself above everybody else. He will be boastful of himself and he will be revealed. You're going to know he's who he is by a great falling away. All these folks are getting out of the church. You're going to know that the Antichrist is coming on the scene because so many people are leaving the church. Hmm. So the Bible describes the Antichrist in these sorts of ways. But is there any man today that could fit these descriptions? Well, Donald Trump claims that he is the chosen one. And what does that put him? Does he accept Jesus as his Savior? No. As a matter of fact, he says he doesn't need to repent because he hasn't done anything wrong. What does that remind you of? Think about it. In Daniel chapter 11, let's see some of the descriptions that the Bible gives of this Antichrist. He says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. That was Daniel 11, 37. Verse 38, But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones, and pleasant things. If you go to Trump Tower there in New York, you will find his home, his estate, adorned with gold, silver, precious stones, and pleasant sea things, and even, even the toilet sitting in his bathroom is plated with gold. <laughs> A gold-plated toilet. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8, he says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn there were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And so this Antichrist will be called the little horn. Isn't that what Daniel says here? This Antichrist shall be called the little horn. And he will have a mouth like a lion. Think about it now. So one of the names given the Antichrist is the little horn. Now we just read in the book of Daniel, this is a reference. This little horn is a reference to a shofar. A shofar, which is a little horn made from a ram, which is an early version of the trumpet. But yet we see the word trump, which is an abbreviation of a trumpet, in the King James Bible. So God's even given us the Antichrist name, the name of the man is in the Bible. Twice. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
God has hidden this in here if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall be raised first. In both of these words, or verses, the word trump is abbreviated for trumpet, which is literally a little horn, just like the shofar. So we see Trump's name appears in the King James Bible in two places. And it means trumpet. Or, as Daniel said, a little horn. You see there? God has showed us where he's coming from. And he rises out of the devil, the beast. The word trump in the New Testament matches the little horn that is said to have the eyes of a man and to boast great things. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8 again. I considered the horns. Now consider the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. The Antichrist will deny both the Father and the Son. I don't need to ask God for forgiveness because I haven't done anything wrong. He's denied both God and the Father, the Son. In 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, way back in the closing parts of the Bible, Who is a liar? But he that denieth Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. And so by asking who is a liar, he declares that Jesus Christ, this verse is not only telling us that the Antichrist will deny the Father and the Son, but he's not going to do it out of ignorance because he is rejecting the truth. He will throw the truth to the ground. What verse was that? 1 John 2.22. Oh, uh, Daniel 8, verse 12. He's going to, I'm going to show you where he throws the truth to the ground. Uh, but uh, denying the Antichrist is in 1 John 2.22. Okay? Daniel. All right, now Daniel 8.12. Okay. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And he cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prosper. And so what he does, he lies. He continuously lies. What does Donald Trump do? Lies. He continuously lies. He fits another description of the Antichrist. He fits the description of the Antichrist in being the little horn. <coughs> His name is actually Trump. The Bible's description of the Antichrist and he casts the truth to the ground. The, the Antichrist will be a pathological liar. He holds that the truth has no value to him. You see, the truth doesn't mean anything to him. He casts it to the ground like it's worthless. It doesn't, it doesn't have any value to him whatsoever unless it can be used in a way to promote himself. He knows that Jesus is his Savior is our Savior. But he denies him anyway. Amen. He boldly said on public TV just last week, get out and vote for me, Christians. I'm not a Christian. Vote for me, Christians. Isn't that what he said? I'm not a Christian. He doesn't, he doesn't give anything to Jesus, nor to God. Now, Trump has been surrounded by Christians and embraced by the evangelical community of those ones that have called themselves Christian nationalists back in 2016. He is fully aware of who Jesus is. As a matter of fact, that woman that's running that organization up there, I suppose, she claims to have led him to Christ. 
I can't tell. Despite all of this, in one more of his stunning admissions by any politician, Trump specifically said in one of his speeches, he does not seek God's forgiveness because he has not done anything wrong. This is not only denying the need for forgiveness from God, but he denies the need for a Savior. If you've got somebody that you know that's doing this, they are really walking close to the devil. And you better watch how close you get to this individual because this individual has the power to bring you to himself if you let him. <coughs> Excuse me. Now Trump doesn't just match a few of the descriptions of the man of sin in the Bible, but he matches every one of them to a T. And no one has ever come close to him matching these descriptions. Now, if it is not time for Jesus to come back, Trump is going to die just like any other man. But if it is now time for Jesus to come back, he's going to be the Antichrist. But only if it's time, because the devil has always got him an Antichrist in waiting. Because the devil doesn't know when Jesus is coming back. Jesus said in John chapter 5 and verse 43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. And this is what's happened. He's coming in his own name. He's not coming in the name of God or Jesus. He's coming in his own name. He is loved throughout Israel. And as I said before, there's uh, train stations, town squares. And they, got, they even got him uh, on one of their coins along King Cyrus. Alongside of King Cyrus. And so <laughs> they've really fallen head over heels for Trump. And in the future, if he really is the Antichrist, as we think he is today, they're going to accept him as a Messiah. Christian nationalists have already accepted Trump as being chosen by God, like he's another King Cyrus. And they think he's the Savior of America. And so they've come up with this Project 2025. So he can take us back to those uh, times like that were in the Bible. Where the king ruled and reigned over the whole earth at that point in time. And Daniel chapter 7 and verse 4. <clears throat> it says the first was like a lion. And he's talking about the beast now that he's seen. And had eagle's wings. Now, think about the eagle's wings there for a minute. Because America, what is our national bird? The eagle. Anything that you see, an eagle is like power, authority, okay? And so he has eagle's wings. I behold till the wings thereof were plucked off, and it lifted up from the earth. And they stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And so is he talking about America being solely given over to this Antichrist? You see there? He was made to stand up like a man. Isn't that what he's doing right now? Standing up like a man here in America? The Antichrist has a mouth of a lion. And he wants everyone to know that he claims to be the king of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And so when we look at the Bible's description, this man is really coming. I don't see how anybody can miss it, really. His constant roar has laid claim to our whole American way of life. And he's left people afraid to say anything 
that might encourage his attacks upon them. Yeah, he's taken over the whole Republican Party. It's no longer the Republican Party, it's the Trumpican Party. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Who's our adversary? Is Trump here for our good then? What's an adversary? That's somebody that's against you, like you're going to court. And the district attorney is, <clears throat> is there to prosecute you. He's not your defense attorney, he's to prosecute you. <coughs> the Antichrist is arrogant and marginalizes himself above all others. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. He's going to stand up against Jesus, but Jesus is going to knock him down a notch or two. In Revelation chapter 19, he's going to cast him into a bottomless pit. Trump's arrogance is never more obvious than when he is publicly criticized. They, uh, Biden had got some prisoners that Russia had over there, one a television evangel uh, uh, journalist, rather, uh, and, uh, and two men he got free from uh, over there. And uh, how did Trump respond to this? Now, he wasn't responding in such a way that he was happy that the people got out of there or anything, but he magnified himself yeah. by belittling his critics. Yeah. And as we see him do, with uh, Biden and all these other people. Well, I, I personally was happy that they got out of there. Yes. Uh, because I don't, I don't want anybody to have to be locked up in prison to tell you the truth. And I'm sorry that the devil has to be, but this is, this is God's thing. You know, he said in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up amongst them another little horn before before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. You see, hey, he got a big mouth, don't he? Boy, you can just see that mouth going 90 miles an hour everywhere. Uh, he is boastful, and he is he's constantly bragging about himself and the things that he does. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue for forty and two months. So you see there, that's a, that's a half, of, half of the seven year period, three and a half years. He is clearly going to fulfill Bible prophecy by not only lying about Jesus, he doesn't even believe Jesus is the Christ. But he's also going to deny the Father and the Son by refusing to seek God's forgiveness. If he believed that Jesus was the Christ, how many of us in here know this morning that they have done things wrong? How many in here this morning knows that they need a Savior? This man don't need a Savior. He ain't done nothing wrong. Think about that. That's, that's a sad situation because I know I have. <laughs> Every day of my life I do things that ain't pleasing in God's sight. It doesn't mean I, I, I try to, it doesn't mean I want to, but just my very nature is to be that way. Because I was, when, uh, before I was born, my ancestors, breaking down to my father, he imparted that fallen spirit to me before I was ever born. Otherwise I would have never been born. Oh, I would have been a stillbirth because you have to have the, the spirit as well as the flesh because without the spirit the flesh is dead and so Trump is clearly fulfilling Bible prophecy in Daniel chapter 11 says in his estate shall stand up a vile person verse 21 
They shall not give honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. That's it. This kingdom. It doesn't say the United States, so does it? It just says the kingdom by flatteries. See? He has used vulgar, vulgar language to target others from everything to their gender, their intelligence, and even their physical appearance. And he's done so much that I myself believe some of the things he said years ago. And got caught up in, in some of them things myself. But you know what? We can repent as long as we realize that there is a God that has sent his son down here and offered us repentance. We can repent. But when you take the stance that you've done nothing wrong and you don't need to repent, how can you have any help from God? So, contrary to the belief of all these rallies that Trump has, the Bible says he is a vile person. Now, can you say a vile person, he would be one just because he raped a few women? Or he's got 34 felony counts against him besides that? And he tried to do an insurrection in the United States on January the 6th, 2021? And he even tried to incite the people to hang our Vice President Mike uh, uh, yeah. Pence at the time? <laughs> Think about it. Who but a vile person would do something like that? And yet, he honors the God of forces in Daniel chapter 11, verse 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. Now this verse is telling us that the Antichrist shall honor the God of forces with gold and silver and stuff. Why does he have his whole home decked out in gold and silver if he's not honoring somebody or something? Who would want their toilet seat to be gold-plated? <laughs> oh, I have to sit on a gold-plated toilet seat. I mean, who is so vulgar or vile that he even think of such a thing? And this God of forces is translated as our armed forces. And he's going to use our armed forces for his own intentions. In the 5th century B.C., Apollo became known as the sun god, a symbol of which was often used in ancient battles. But Apollo is also a derivative of the name of Apollyon. And Apollyon is referenced in Revelation chapter 9 and verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes hereafter. The Trump Tower has artwork dedicated to the god Apollo, including a painting on the ceiling called the Aurora Fresco. The triumph of Apollo led by Aurora is painted on the ceiling in his home in the Trump Tower. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The Antichrist's heart is turned after pagan gods, and the sun god is symbolized by one specific thing, gold. Gold. You see all these pictures of they, they, that the Catholic Church came up with, and they got these holy men, and you see this aurora behind them, and it looks like a sunburst or something. On a, that's gold. The love of money. You see there? The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of gold trumps this obsession with gold 
and honoring the God of forces parallels to a T this obsession of worshiping pagan idols, pagan gods. And he wants to be one. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even into the consummation. And the determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. What he means is there's going to be a bad thing happen because he's going to stop them from sacrificing. And then all hell's going to break loose here. You're going to take his mark or else. He's, that's when he's going to proclaim to the world, worship me, I'm God. You'll know he's the Antichrist without a doubt then. But for most people it will already have been too late because they will have already taken his mark. One of the prophecies involving this Antichrist is that he puts together this seven-year agreement. And this agreement is referred to as many. But the Antichrist breaks this agreement and he enters the third temple and he demands worship and he claims that he is God. Now, he has, as I said a while ago, <clears throat> he has actually tried a peace plan in Israel since at least 1987. Back then he called it the ultimate deal in an interview now with the Manhattan Magazine Incorporated. Now, he named the deal of the century in later interviews with himself, of course, as a great deal maker. And Trump made the deal back in 2020, and his Abraham's Accord laid the foundation for the covenant with many. In fact, Trump wanted to call the agreement the Trump Accords. Since Trump left office, he has taken many additional steps to make the Abraham Accord stronger, and he wants to move forward. And just recently, Netanyahu visited with him down at Mar-a-Lago. We've seen that on the news a while back. Now the Antichrist is going to disguise himself as an angel of light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, he says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So it is no big thing if his ministers also do the same thing. And so as one of Satan's ministers, he will in fact be transformed or he will be disguised as a force for good an angel of light so rather than being clearly anti-Christian now listen to me the Bible is teaching us that we should expect this final antichrist to come on the scene as a strong supporter of Christianity and of Israel. I'm doing this for the church. Y'all are Christians. I'm not a Christian. Vote for me, Christians. Yeah, he's coming on the scene like he wants to be part as a Christian and promote Christianity and Israel. He will masquerade himself as a force for good, as a defender of Christian values. That's what Project 2025 is all about. Promote Christian values. So he says, um, during this Christian values, there's not going to be any more abortions. Women won't be permitted to work. Women will have to stay home and be keepers of the home. Uh, I don't know what the women that don't have a husband's going to do. Because uh, his uh, God with him... Uh, um, Vance, he says all these women that don't have children are nothing but cat ladies. <laughs> so what that means is beyond me too. So I don't know. He's, he's going to do exactly what Trump says for him to do because he is the second beast and he promotes the first beast. By disguising themselves as angels of light, Satan and his ministers are actually mocking Christians and Christianity. 
the Antichrist will love money as it's all kinds of roots in evil. Money has a lot of roots in evil. And people covet it after money and they run after it and they do all sorts of things for money. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, he says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, it's, a, it's not just the money. It's what they can do with the money. How they can acquire all these earthly things. Now, having earthly things isn't, isn't, isn't bad in itself. But when you put them things in front of God, you see, then you're coveting something. And you're not going after God, you're seeking after earthly things. Now, the Bible doesn't make such a proclamation about any other sin being the root of all kinds of evil. It doesn't say that murder or lying or stealing or anything. Nothing but money. And not having money, but the love of money. See, that's the thing. That's all on their mind when they wake up in the morning. And when they go to sleep at night. What can I buy with my money today? How am I going to spend my money here? How am I going to do this? It's specifically the love of money that is referred to as a root of all evil. It can be defined as greed or overwhelming desire to possess more than what we need. Especially material things. The greed for money is the root cause of so much sin that's in this world today. It's the predominant character of the Antichrist. That's all Trump can think about is money. He's about loving money and possessing the things of this world. How many times? Oh, I've got billions of dollars. I'm rich. I can do whatever I want. i got all this stuff. The Antichrist is revealed by the great falling away, as I said a moment ago. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You're going to know it. Or you should have been taking notice when you've seen all the folks leaving the churches. And people, <clears throat> they're not leaving the churches for another church. Let no man deceive you. Verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He has been revealed. There is a great falling away, and who has been revealed? Just look out there now, someone you hadn't seen before everybody left the churches. And now who has been revealed? Anywhere you go, almost in West Virginia, you're going to see... Trump signs on people's homes. Vote for Trump. They're out here selling trinkets alongside the road under these little tent things claiming Trump 2024. A, mar a remarkable yet overlooked meaning behind this verse is that the falling away of those that leave the faith will be tied in with the revealing of the man of sin. You see there? They're not only left the church but they're tied in with Donald Trump, the Antichrist. In other words, these two events are related. As those who fall away from the faith will fall towards the man of sin. And just look how many people you know who don't go to church, but yet they want to vote for Donald Trump. Think about it. There it is, as plain as the hand in front of our face. When you look at Scripture... What does the Bible say? Not what somebody else put in Hollywood, but what does the Word of God have to say? When you take the Word of God and you compare it with what's happening today, it's easy to see. The falling away reveals the Antichrist. We just simply need to look around and see who's falling away from the faith. Somebody needs to ask that fellow in the orange suit, would he vote for Donald Trump? But now you can't because you're pending an investigation to be tried as a criminal. And only the criminal Donald Trump can vote. You, as a criminal, you can't vote. But if you could vote, would you vote for Donald? And I'll bet you the answer would be 
Think about it. It's not simply just falling away for the sake of leaving the faith, but a falling away from Jesus Christ to the Antichrist. That's the worst part, you see. And that's why there's going to be so many child molesters in the years and days to come. Because Satan is the great child molester. And some of these fake Christians even consider Trump as a savior of America. And they put him on the same level as Jesus. And so I ain't done nothing wrong. You see what I mean? Because they've already fallen for Trump. I ain't done nothing wrong. The Antichrist has the ultimate ego to call himself God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. <clears throat> Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's exactly what we're going to see him do. He's going to sit in the temple in Israel and he's going to proclaim to the world that he's God. In this remarkable verse, we are told that Antichrist will be so full of himself that he will magnify himself in his heart as Satan said, I will ascend my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. And so... Donald Trump is nothing but a pawn that the devil is using to get what he wants. Now, who on the world scene today, other than him, matches all these verses? Nobody. Nobody but Donald Trump. Who else thinks so highly of himself or has that kind of an ego who has already referred to himself as a chosen one? And he has already thanked people who said that he was the second coming of God to Israel. And he has already embraced the notion that he is the Savior of America. Ain't no one else can save you, only me. I can do all these things. I'm your worst nightmare, but I'm your best enemy. These are his words in his speeches. Would it really be a shock for him to proclaim that he saved the world? Would not it fit in perfectly with what he's been saying right along? Yes. His proclamation that he has saved the world is inevitable. But none of it's true. Right. He hasn't really done anything. He's helped nobody. He's not battling evil with all these things that's happening to him. He's battling those that oppose him or have come up against him. E. Jean Carroll. That man raped me. That's what she said. He raped me. And four or five other women, they came to the same thing. And out of his own mouth, he likes to grab women by their personal parts. <laughs> Why wouldn't he have raped them? If, they, if he grabbed them, threw them over against the wall, and did whatever he wanted to do with them. I don't know these women. I don't even know who they are. And yet they got pictures of him with them. <laughs> and if he didn't know that prostitute Stormy Daniels why did he pay her all that money or why did he try to cover it up Trump's battles are all about elevating himself and destroying his enemies he lines up with the Bible and the Bible's description of the Antichrist and he comes so close that no one has ever been able to do this. And only the times ahead are going to see how bad this man really is. The Bible has given us descriptions of the Antichrist and they are all pointing directly to Donald J. Trump. And if they let that evil man get in charge or over the armed forces of America, you will see how he honors the God of forces. If he gets in charge of our armed forces again, you can bet there's going to be World War III. You can take that to the bank. What we need to do is to keep on looking towards Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
And we know when this Antichrist comes on the scene that we know this is definitely the very end time. I wonder, when you come to Jesus today, since you know that this is going on, or will you take his mark? In Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9, the Bible says, The third, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now you think about that. If you take that mark, God is going to pour out his wrath upon you. There's no coming back from it. There is no repentance to it. Verse 11 says, The smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. But God is putting a seal on his people in the next verse. He says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Now you think about it. Where are you standing today? Are you going to worship the beast and take his mark? Or have you already been sealed with the seal of God? You can look at yourself and about what you're doing. Are you doing what God says to do or not? If you're not doing what God says to do, you don't have God's seal on you. And you better get it. Because God may mistake you. Well, He's going to know who you are really. But I want it to sound good to you. So He may mistake you for being part of the Antichrist if you don't have His seal. But God knows His people. Amen. And He's putting a seal upon His people right now. And if you don't get that seal of God on your forehead, you're going to have the mark of the devil on your forehead or on your hand, one or the other. So I, I encourage you to come to Jesus now while you still have time. Because very soon, this Antichrist is going to take power. Israel had just been a big thing going on over there with Iran right now. And Hezbollah just attacked them and they attacked Israel. And there have been all sorts of things happening over there in the Middle East. And you know what? The United States is going to be drawn into it before it's over. And Donald J. Trump is going to send them Air Force jets of ours loaded down with nuclear warheads and he's going to drop them on Iran. And when he does, Russia's going to respond along with China and they're going to drop theirs on America. In the first strike, two billion people, maybe three billion, is going to die. And how many of them is going to be ready to go be with Jesus? Are you going to be ready? You see, there's some things that's going to have to happen before Jesus comes back. These wars have got to take place. The prophecy in Ezekiel has got to happen. What are you going to do with this man called Jesus? That's what you need to decide today. If you don't decide on Jesus, you're going to take the devil's mark. And if you take the devil's mark, you're going to go to hell. No if and buts about There's no coming back from taking that mark. There's no repentance from it. God offers none. Once you take that mark, you're doomed. So you think about it. If the, if the Antichrist is coming on the scene right now, we don't have much time. But th let me tell you something before we close here this morning. We're going to close here in a minute or two. But let me tell you something before we close. You know, even if you don't end up taking the devil's mark, if you don't accept Jesus, you're still going to hell. Isn't that awesome? You still get to go to hell. You know why? Because only children of God are going to heaven. Now, whether you take the mark or not, if you want to go to heaven, you're going to have God's seal on you. And what is God's seal? Well, one of the things is doing what God says to do. He says, keep my Sabbath. Keep my commandments. If you're not keeping God's commandments today... How do you plan on getting into God's heaven tomorrow? Because if God says, come up hither, 
if that's the terminology he uses, or maybe he doesn't say anything. He just snatches you away without even opening his mouth saying anything. He just pulls you up out of the way. <laughs> but if you don't have God's seal on you, how's he going to pull you up out of the way? That means you're going to be here for the wrath of God then, aren't you? And once he's killed you, and he sent all the birds there, we read in Revelation 19 where he called for all the birds to come by and eat your flesh. Once that great supper of God has been over, your spirit is still going somewhere. And if your flesh has endured being eaten by some ravenous bird, your spirit is going to hell. And it's going to suffer there until God pulls you out of hell momentarily to tell you at the great white throne judgment that your destiny is a lake of fire forever. What a hideous thing to happen. Why would you want to go from hell to the lake of fire? Why do you want to go to hell to begin with? What's there for you? Fire and brimstone. Eternal torment. Nothing good. Nothing, nothing godly. Nothing but God's vengeance. Anger. And why? Because you point your finger to God and telling God, I'm not doing nothing you tell me to do. I ain't keeping your Sabbath. I ain't doing nothing you say. I'm going to do what I want to do and you can't make me. That's fine. You can have it your way. But your way is the hell way. Not the highway, but the hell way. So you think about it. As we close now, Marie's going to give us a song of invitation. Would you come? Thank you. Amen.